Hi, I'm Jenny. Welcome to my channel where we focus on using ordinary materials to make beautiful things. Today we're working in the Motivational Monday book um, and I'm going to use some tracing uh, to make the layout. So I used, I, I have some stuff called artist tracing paper uh, that is obviously very thin uh, paper. Um, but if you have deli paper, it's about the same weight. Um, when I'm looking at it, like for the opacity, it's about the same weight. The deli paper has a little bit of sheen to it uh, that the tracing paper doesn't. But other than that, um, you could use deli paper. You could probably use some white tissue paper, wrapping paper kind of tissue if you don't have tracing paper. I just happened to have some of this in, in my stash. Uh, so I used it and I traced an image from a magazine. So I looked at this and I didn't really want her hands and I didn't want it to stop here. Um, and I didn't want the shadows. Um, so I decided, but I, but I liked the look of her face. So I decided to trace her face and leave out her hands, kind of fill in the hair where her hands were. Um, kind of accentuated the lips and the eyes a little more. Um, so I took, a, I took a few liberties with it, but basically it's the same image. So this is one way if you're not confident in drawing, especially drawing faces, and I am not confident at faces at all. Um, I can draw them, but it takes me a while and I have to do a lot of erasing. Uh, and I, I don't always want to spend that much time on like my motivational journal. And I don't always want the magazine image. Sometimes I want it to look like it's drawn. So tracing is a good option for that. So I've done that and I've left it, you know, so then I can kind of do anything I want uh, to her outfit. Um, but I have drawn in a few of the details. So other examples of, of tracing that you might do. Um, here, I really didn't want the T. I really just liked kind of the headshot. Very, very royal. Um, so I did some tracing around the face and then I manipulated here. I kind of did a little overlapping and made it look more like um, a royal uh, cape, you know, um, like you would, you might see. And then I just kind of cartooned, filled in um, the, the crown instead of trying to get all the little details because it is really hard when you're tracing to see some of the smaller details, like on the crown, it would be hard to see those. Um, I, I took a few liberties. I left off the earrings. Uh, I, I added in some, some hair just to bring the forehead down a little bit. Uh, and I kind of like this one because I feel like it's fairly androgynous. Uh, and I think that's kind of fun. So that might be a future layout. Um, I just wanted to, you know, I wanted to give it a, a try with you know, with some smaller images too. So another one that I did was this hand. I like the hand, but I didn't want uh, the piece of jewelry I know, right? Who doesn't want the jewelry on it? It's, it's hard to imagine that I might want a hand without jewelry on it, but <laughs> indeed. Um, so, and I and I didn't really want to use the tattoo with the, with the person's name, you know? So I, I traced I trace the hand. Hands to me are hard. I have a hard time drawing hands. So I trace the hand and then I added, um, you know, some little detail here to make it look like there's a little bit of a sleeve. Um, it was hard to see the crease lines of the fingers, so I just pulled it out, you know, and set it beside it. Um, you know, and just kind of went beside it and kind of looked at where the crease lines were and added, added some of those. Uh, but now I do have, you know, a hand that I could use that at some point I could put something else on if I wanted to put another image on top of it, if I wanted to, you know, cut some of the fingers and, and have something interweave, you know, a, a card or something in it. Um, you know, so tracing might be a good option for adapting images where you like part of the image but not all of the image. And maybe you don't want to use the whole thing uh, or maybe you want a hand-drawn look. So I just flipped through a magazine and, you know, did these. Um, I didn't I didn't really feel like you needed to watch me trace. Uh, I just used a fine line uh, Sharpie marker, one of the ultra-fine ultra fine Sharpies. 
to trace it. Okay, so we'll get started with today's layout. Um, I am gonna use, I, I keep a stash of pages that already have something on them that are kind of uh, pre-decorated with a book page and things like that. You can see this came from a magazine. It came from a real simple magazine. Uh, so it's just a page out of a magazine. I like to use those because they're very thin and by the time you start putting all this stuff on top of it, uh, you know, that makes your that makes your page thicker. Um, so I just kind of go through and, and glue things down sort of randomly and stick those pages in, in a bin so that I have some when I want them. Um, so I'm gonna use this page. Uh, the writing kind of goes every direction, but a couple of them are right side up this way. But when I looked at it, uh, so you can see obviously the page underneath and you could you would leave it like this uh, you could cut it out so that this part is is brighter or you could do the whole page so it knocks it back and you're just going to see that but you will see this underneath so you have a couple of choices you can put some paint underneath in the area so that it will it will be more solid uh, like if you just wanted to put white paint down uh, or or you know a light color pink peach whatever you could do that you could mount this onto a piece of, of just white paper so that it had a solid background behind it and then cut out around it and use it. Um, I kind of like looking, you know, the look of the stuff underneath, but I wasn't crazy about um, where some of it was placed. So when I flipped it the other way, I liked it better. So I'm gonna stick with, with leaving leaving that where we can see it, but I am going to cut around it so that the background is is brighter. I don't want, I didn't want to dull the whole background down. Um, so I do want to do that. Uh, so we're gonna glue that down. I'm gonna cut that out and glue that down to get started. Then I'm gonna use some watercolor paint uh, to, to uh, paint the person. I have some new watercolors that I want to try out so I'll show you those. Uh, they're uh, Wonder and Weiss, the Create Collection 28 Pearlescent Watercolor Paints. Um, so I just got these over the weekend. I got them at Ross, which is a discount store. Uh, so they have lots of things on closeout from other stores. So I didn't pay very much for them. I think they were $3.99. Uh, so they're, you know, they, they look like they're, they're pretty cool. I like the colors um, and there were lots of them. So I have that. And I have my metallic um, paints as well. And then I have um, my plain, my regular ultra color watercolors. So I wanna use some watercolors to, to dress her up uh, and to uh, make the page interesting. So let's get started with a pair of scissors and cutting her out. Um, so let me grab some scissors. So, I don't know why I didn't uh, grab the scissors to start with. Usually I do. So I am just gonna leave the tiniest little bit of edge around so that I don't cut off the black line. Um, I want to leave the line. I want to be able to see that line. I'm sorry, that's loud. I want to be able to see that line. And I may even go back and uh, outline it more after it's down and, and I'm done, um, when we're done painting, it, it might need a little more uh, heavier line for outlining, possibly. We'll see how it looks. But I do want to be sure I don't cut off what I've drawn here. So. Just, just leaving a tiny little edge. So if you don't have, you know, access to a lot of, of cutout kind of things, um, get rid of some of that extra, sorry. Uh, like I know a lot of people um, have books with uh, pictures of people in them that are kind of artistic, painted, drawn sort of 
or sort of people. Um, I don't have any of those books, uh, but since I have the magazines, I can kind of create that same look by tracing. So that's, that's what we're gonna do. And then I'm just gonna glue this onto the next page in my art journal. So sometimes, you know, you can create outside of the journal and then just add it, which is what I'm gonna do today. Instead of doing it directly on the page. Which I could, but since I have this page already done, it saves me from having to do the collage uh, for that page. Yeah, since I have this one done. Let's see, Let's see how that looks. And that fits just perfectly, doesn't it? Just right there. Oh, I love that. Okay, all right. Let's just get that glued down. So I don't use Mod Podge. I use um, this Roman Pro 543 Universal Wallpaper and Border Adhesive. It's very inexpensive. You can see it's a 32 ounce bucket for um, less than $9. It's like $8 and change. Uh, grab a brush. I just wasn't prepared, I guess, today. Uh, so it, it works really well, um, and it does it does make a, a great adhesive. Oh, look, I put it down backwards. We could do it that way. That's interesting if we wanted to turn our head the other way. I think we're going to do it with the, that line up today. But Okay, so we'll just kind of start with... Some, just some glue and I'm going to kind of go ahead and cover the whole page just because it's going to seal it um, and help help that paint work a little better and later when we write um, when we write something down the side I'm thinking just the word believe or something like that down the side maybe believe in yourself That helps if you get it centered. <laughs> Maybe just starting at the bottom because I want it right down there. There we go. And of course, I'm getting some wrinkling because it's paper and I've just put really wet glue on it. So, you know, then we expect that. It's very thin. I'm going to turn the edge. But I don't, the wrinkling doesn't bother me. To me, it's just part of the, you know, the look of the, the art journal. So I do have quite a bit of... Uh, it's like I have quite a bit of air under there. And it's not like it, looking like it wants to stick today. That's interesting. Oh, there we go. There we go. Just didn't have enough glue there. So, like I said, the wrinkling doesn't bother me, but if it bothers you, um, there, are, you know, you can use a little bit less glue. I could have used a glue stick. And, and put this down and it would have been much less wrinkly. Um, but the, it doesn't bother me. I kind of like that wrinkly texture. So. To me, it just, it just gives it a little more dimension. Um, and it makes it a little more interesting. And two, by doing this, it kind of seals down all of that paper that's in the background. <laughs> Get my fingers stuck on it. I always do that, don't I? <laughs> okay, um, so this is really gonna need to be a little more dry. So I am going to let this dry uh, or hit it with my heat gun maybe, and I will be right back. 
Okay, I'm back. I have dried it. Um, I went ahead and used my heat gun. A couple of the edges didn't want to stay glued down, uh, so I went ahead and hit it, the edges with a little bit of the Yoohoo glue stick. And that seems to be seems to be working okay. Um, you know, it still feels slightly damp, but I don't, I don't think that's too bad. Oops, and I see that a little bit of what I had put down before is coming up because of the wet, because it was so wet. It's okay, just glue that down. There we go. Okay, so I want to use uh, my new my new paint. Um, so they're pearlescent colors. They're beautiful, aren't they? They look like got shimmery eyeshadow. Don't, like that would be, that's so pretty. Okay, so um, I'm not gonna be too concerned about, you know, what color, what color everything and everyone is. Um, but I am gonna, let's see. I think I wanna do it all in the pearl lesson. I, I don't think I wanna, I was thinking maybe I would do part of it in regular and part of it in pearl, but I'm just dying to try out these pearls. So let's see if we can, let's see what color this is really. doesn't have much color at all. That's just kind of pearl. Hmm. Very pearly. Okay. I was thinking that we might do might do our face in this, but I'm not sure it's going to have enough color, but we'll try it. It's kind of a, a beigey tan. Because I'm just going to do... I'm just gonna do the whole thing because I think with the with the colors behind it, it will be kind of fun to just do it in a, a pearly, you know, over the top and let that stuff show through behind. And you can see the wrinkles of the paper are showing up, <laughs> which kind of makes it interesting, right? May not be, you know, beautiful, beautiful, but I think it will be interesting. So we're just gonna try it and play. You know, if it if it's terrible, then we'll just you know throw it out and start over with something else. I mean, you know, that is the beauty of of having like junk journal kind of things is that it's not it's not something that's you know set in stone, right? I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of go up over the hair and eyes because I'm gonna come back with a darker color, I think. And that way, that way the skin will be all the way up here. We're using this pearl for the skin. Cause we're gonna go over some of those other things in a minute anyway. Since it's watercolor, it should all just kind of blend. Hmm, it's kind of interesting. <laughs> oh. This may be kind of ugly. I'm not really sure. <laughs> not really sure right now. Oh, okay. Let's decide on her hair color. I'm thinking this kind of lavender would be nice. Be nice for her hair. All right. This is looking pretty sad. <sighs> I have a feeling this video might be <laughs> not going up on online because it's looking pretty sad. We'll see. We'll see where it ends, right? Because maybe it'll end in a place that's that's better. 
Okay, so for her eyebrows, let's do a little bit darker. Oh, we just want those. A little darker on top. You know, I don't know, maybe once it dries and we go back over it with another marker, might be might be fun. I guess we'll see. We'll wait and see. Worst case scenario is we just throw it out and start over. Which, you know, has been known to happen. Okay, so what are we thinking for the lips? Let's see, her hair's purple, so I want kind of a purpley pink, maybe. Maybe this. Get for a let's see if we can get enough little pigment going on. Like I said, we're gonna go back and re outline once it's dry. I wonder if we can get rid of that eyeshadow. Eyeshadow, maybe. Let's see. What color? I keep reaching for the glue. What color should we make her eyes? Her hair is lavender. What about this? There's kind of the slaty blue here. Okay, now we just need to decide what color to paint her clothes, and then we'll dry her off and we'll see see how she looks. Now maybe we'll go ahead and hit her with a heat gun because she's looking pretty sorry. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. You just never know, right? Until we until we go back and outline, we never know. Okay, let's see. What should we do? I like the pearlescent paint. Whatever we do with this, I think the paint's fun. Um, what should we do down here? Let's see. Maybe, maybe something in this little bit of, little bit of red here. The wrinkling is really bad on this, so I guess I should have known that you know, water, watercolor paint, and the water-based glue were just gonna make it really wet. But like I said, I'm still not sure I care too much. The the wrinkling doesn't bother me that much, you know, and it's kind of interesting. Since I didn't put anything behind it, um, and you know, there's not white behind it to make it all pop off, uh, it seems like it almost looks like she's made out of a paper bag. Like that wrinkly, you know, it's got it's got a very it's got a very paper bag look to it, which is not bad. It's just you know, it's just kind of different, right? I don't think it's bad, just different. So I guess that was silver that we put on her face. It wasn't really a beige, you know. Maybe we could have put something a little pinker, but 
it's, you know, now that you see it here, it looks silvery, but when, you know, before it didn't, it didn't look that silvery. It's kind of a little pink. And we didn't get the silvery all the way down to her neck. So we're going to have to do that too. The page is warping. So I think before I put it in my other book, I'm probably um, going to have to put it under something heavy for a little while to uh, let it flatten out a bit. Mm, let's see. Maybe a little bit of that same pink we put on our lips. Right down here. Pink and red, and then okay. Let's go back to this silvery that we put on her face. Because at first it just looked really pearly, and now after I've used it and it sat there for a minute, it looks silvery. I think it looks very silvery. So we could. Maybe um, use that pale pink and just add, you know, add a little little blush up through here. Can't really see it, I don't think, against the background, but okay, so I think I'm going to dry this and then let's outline it and see how it looks because maybe it'll look better. Look better once it's outlined. Let's see what we get when we add some darker lines here. I always think outlining, you know, makes it look better. It's it's kind of that, you know, I mean, it is definitely that kind of illustration, almost cartoon kind of look, but. I like that look, so yeah. I think it's a, I think it's a fun look in an art page. It's not too serious, you know. See, I think that's helping already. I'm not really sure if I want to do the hair or not. But we'll definitely do else. Have you ever noticed I can't talk and draw a line at the same time? <laughs> Every time I'm drawing something, I have to stop. <laughs> See, this was a heavier line to start with, so that one's still pretty heavy and visible. I think it's looking a lot better now with the outlining.
Yeah, I think that looks a lot better. I don't know, what do you think about? Maybe we'll put some in on the hair. Yeah, I think it needs, needs a little bit. Certainly not as many as the finer lines that are there, but. There we go. Yeah, I think she looks a lot better. Okay, let's, uh, let's see, do we wanna do any doodling maybe down here on on her outfit? We could draw, so we could do some polka dots. Definitely on her collar. Okay, about her shirt. Let's see if she has polka dots on her shirt, on her, on her collar. Maybe she needs some stripes on her shirt. All right, that's the fun if we had done the magazine cut out. Um, well, you know, we could still doodle on it, but we'd kind of be stuck with whatever, whatever um, the model was wearing instead of whatever we wanted her to wear. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I'm liking that. All right, so I'm thinking, let's see. I was thinking that on, for the word, instead of a, a whole quote or phrase, I was thinking about just writing like a, a word this way, um, or we could put something down here. But I think based on how how much space the, you know, the, the focal point takes up, there's not a lot of space to write anything very large. I mean, we could write across, I guess. But so I'm thinking, we're just gonna just gonna do up here maybe. go back and make that a little fatter so that we can put an outline around it to help it pop off the page. So, I know I've been using this um, little chalk chalk writer that I showed you before. Uh, this is from Craft Decor. I got it at Dollar Tree, and if you remember, it's you can use it on a chalkboard, and then you just wipe it off with uh, like a wet one or or a paper towel that's wet. But it, it's but it comes off of the the uh, chalkboard, so it's it's meant for that. And it kind of has that crayony uh, feel to it, but I've been using it uh, in place of a Posca pen 
to outline things because it's it's very opaque and it's nice and bright white. Um, over the weekend, I came across two more colors. So I have now a silver and a gold one as well that I just wanted to show you. I, th I think, I don't know, I think what we're doing today, oh, maybe we should do it in gold. I was gonna say, let's just go ahead and do it in white, but oh, since we've got the gold, that seems like we might have to, might have to do that, right? So I just wanted to show you the, the packaging so you can see if you have access to something like Dollar Tree or something like this, you can see it says it's a chalk rider, right? It says wet, erasable, mess, and dust-free. So it's kind of a, a crayon-y sort of, sort of feel. All right, let's see how this one works. We'll just kind of, that's nice. Go around it in gold. Usually we do this in the white to help it pop off the page, but I think the gold's gonna look good. And these are very, they have a very soft feel to them. They're not, you don't have to push very hard. There's a good deal of pigment. Um, like I said, it does have kind of a crayony feel, but you don't have that resistance uh, that you might get with an actual crayon. So. Well, I think that's going to be pretty. I really like the way that gold is looking there. That's nice. Yep. Something different from the white. I know we usually use the white. Silver would have been good too, especially I think with that kind of pearl essent lavender paint in her hair there. That might have been nice. Alright, that helps it pop. Oh, I like that. I like this. This was not, um, you know, it was, it's, it's not a super busy page, um, but it's a lot of fun. I, I really like this one and I feel like it turned out pretty well. Um, the, the wrinkling really doesn't bother me and once we did the outlining, I think it looked a lot better. So, you know, if you, if you want to try uh, tracing, you know, some a, a face or something like that, and putting it in, I would I would definitely recommend it. I'm gonna keep playing with it uh, to see if I can come up with some more tips and tricks. And if I if I do, then you know we'll I'll let you know. In the meantime, if you like this video, please hit like. Uh, I really appreciate it when you do. Leave me a comment. I'd love to talk to you about it. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. If you have, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, until I see you again, remember use what you have to make your life more beautiful. Bye.